for the Dr. Tanji Show. Hey, you're on the air with Dr. Tanji. Talk to me. As soon as I hear your voice, Dr. Tanji, my day is better. Hey, Dr. Tanji, I took your advice and made some changes in my life. And you know what? I've been winning ever since. Thank you for your advice. Now, here's Dr. Tanji. Hey, hey. How are you? And welcome to the show that is designed to inspire you, empower you, and prayerfully teach you some things to do in life that will make your life better. It will get you from the point of where you are now to where you want to be. And I'm so grateful that you joined us today. We have an amazing gentleman, gentlemen rather, <laughs> that have come into the studio today and, and, and they are here to bless us tremendously. But before I get to them, I'm sitting on pens and needle and if my mother-in-law is watching, yes, I'm going from side to side because I'm really, really excited now, Bertha. <laughs> I want to... Definitely make certain that you know that they will be coming up in about 20 minutes. So first of all, we'd like to kind of let you know what the show is about. I told you that it was inspiring, uplifting, and to motivate you. It is to prayerfully get you to from where you are to where you want to be. And it is designed with kingdom principles in mind. And I... When I talk about a kingdom principle, and there's something that's called, of course, a segment that calls how that is called "How did I get here?" I've had an opportunity to go through your questions, and thank you so very much for reaching out to me on social media, whether it was Facebook at Dr. Tanji Scott, uh, I'm sorry, at Dr. Tanji Show, whether it was Instagram at Dr. Tanji Show, and uh, what's the other one? Twitter at Dr. Tanji Show. I take it. And I do have an opportunity to look at them, and I'm grateful, so very, very grateful for your support. Now, without further ado, I want to make certain that we're all kind of walking this beautiful journey together, okay? And with that, I asked a question last week, um, several questions rather, and I made a statement, how to become influential. And... I want to use the principle, and a lot of my Bible scholars will know what I'm talking about when I say influence, and of course, the first thing that probably comes to mind is Matthew, where Jesus himself speaks about yeast, and how the example of the kingdom is, it's like yeast, it's like you place a little bit of yeast into dough. And if you know anything, I'm from Mississippi. My grandmother used to make biscuits and she placed just a little bit of yeast in the dough, in the flour, and she's kneading. And I would, I remember asking her, Mama, why do you just place a little bit? And she says, that's all it takes. I'm thinking, okay. So when I adopted the ideologies of the kingdom, I had to go back and rediscover rediscover some principles, uh, rediscover some keys, and that rediscovering, and I'm learning, and I'm learning, and I'm dying daily, and I'm learning even more, and then I'm learning that I really didn't know anything. <laughs> so with that being said, your influence, there are divine imperatives, divine urgencies that God has placed now, I want you to think along these lines. We were placed in this earth out of him, and we come to the earth with an assignment. And the only way to get the assignment done is to get into a suit, an earth suit, and it's a body. And oftentimes you, 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 you get the skew kind of mixed up here when you're thinking, or the ideology mixed up when you're thinking that this body is better than that body and this better this that that body is better than this body and you're not we're not we've all come down to get what needs to be done in the earth and it is really really sad to me because i was so guilty of that when i didn't take this thing serious this assignment and i was wrong <laughs> And not only did I have to repent, to him I had to 
forgive myself for wasting time. One of the telltale signs in life is not so much as what you've acquired, the abundance, the title. Oftentimes I don't even use the title doctor because it's not important. It just means that I gotta serve even the more. And that's what I want to do. So after repenting and after forgiving myself, I started to become a student of people who were doing it. And that it is living the life that God promised. And they're doing it in a way where it, it, it goes into everything that I've ever read or I've ever studied in that 66 book, those books. And of course, love is our greatest aim, but the kingdom is something that is just so very, very important. Now, okay, okay, I'm getting off track here. Abun uh, influence. Every human being created by God in this earth was born to be in influential. That's a fact. It's the truth. Number two, you've got to get busy operating in the gifts which makes you or make people do three things. They're going to believe you, they're going to listen to you, and they're going to act about what you're saying. Very, very important. The urgency behind that is that I don't want you to waste any more time. I don't want you to waste time about what people may have said about you in times past. I don't want you to waste time feeling sorry for yourself. I've been there, I swear to you. 26 years cancer free been there homeless been there started a business and lost and started a business and lost and started a business and lost been there so very few excuses I'll kind of take as law because I don't believe in excuses I believe in getting busy making an impact changing answering the question that you were placed in, in the earth for, for your generation. Having that mindset that no matter what, and you can start right where you are. What do people know you? What do they know you for? Who's coming to you saying, hey, okay, I get it now. That's what you stand for. Oh, okay. It's not manipulation. It's not prodding is creating that environment that you're in where what you say makes a difference, how you live makes a difference. I told you that you matter to me and you really, really do. And I, 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 I've got to stress that to you. It matters that you were born. It matters that you get into purpose. It matters that you give us you give us what you're supposed to give us, that gift. All right, without further ado, <laughs> this person that is here oftentimes speaks in front of 20,000 people, if not more. He travels the world. He has done things that kind of, put his life out there as an open book. He is a transformation. He is a transformation. He transformed lives by forcing you to realize who you are. And I say force in a very nice and tactful way. I, back in 1992, was watching a PBS special and there was this gentleman that came across my screen and he said, this is Mamie Brown, baby boy. Now, at, in 1992, since this is a, a, a forum that's built on openness, honesty, openness, and sincerity, I was 22 years old, had three children, was married, knew once upon a time I had dreams of being a doctor but didn't know how to get there. And I'm listening to this man who looks like me, 
and, and, and he stands with such fervor and confidence. And I'm thinking, man, ooh, wow. So I, the internet wasn't really big, I think in 92, so it was going to the library. I was in Mississippi, and, and I remember going to the library and looking this man up and just reading and studying and watching. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, not only did God allow me at this set time, because the teacher will not show up until the student is ready. I'm ready now. The fruit, and for my scholars, there's a passage that Jesus speaks about. You will know them by their fruit. And when I tell you that this Whew, man has produced some fruit. <laughs> oh my God. None other than Mr. John Leslie Brown. <laughs> Welcome to the Dr. Tanji Show. And wow. look at this prince over here. What an oh intro. my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ready to back that up? <laughs> what an intro. Wow. It's such a pleasure. I'm such a fan of your show, and oh, I'm so grateful you, to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much. How could I hear anyone with my headphones? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've got, I'm Les Brown's baby boy, and I've got Les Brown's grandbaby boy here, too. So <laughs> What about that? Honor Brown. Oh, Give it up for Honor. Honor Brown. <laughs> He was like, give me some, okay? Can I eat these Absolutely, absolutely. When it's time, so okay? just wait a second, all right? Oh, it's in a DNA. Yeah, the DNA. The right, hunger right. is in the DNA. I love it. I absolutely love it. I And I will get to you, I promise, because you are such a blessing. When you walk through the door, I'm looking at you, and I thought about my own grandchildren. I've got a little one named Caden who's three years old and he kind of mimics me. And I've got another one named Kendrick that he's not mimicking just yet, but I'm going to get him before long, right? And I always point them to him. And when I walk, when you walk through the door, I just kind of fell in love with your spirit. And thank you so very much for being who you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> My baby boy is here. It's so important as we move into 2019. You know, when the Bible said, be fruitful and multiply, my dad took it serious. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and I'm the youngest of 11. Look, and, and he literally <laughs> fertilized, yes, okay? Yes, indeed. <laughs> and we were just spending time. My dad was in town, and oh, wow. we're watching these YouTube videos of these young kids doing karate and young kids doing all types of things. And it's important now that we don't just have role models for our children. We need enrollment models. Amen enrollment models wow. people that are examples and will take the time to train the next generation of leaders absolutely thank you for that you know I've, i brought my notebook here so if i start writing notes please don't take it offensively <laughs> yes. I, again the teacher has come <laughs> this gentleman um i said he speaks internationally and he does he was awarded a wonderful award at the staples center by i think it was the clippers mm -hmm. and success uh team international correct would you tell me about that particular award please yes uh, whenever you're doing work in the community yeah. they don't have an oscars for us <laughs> you know they don't have uh right. any type of you know awards right. for community service that often and i had the privilege of being honored by the clippers organization by humanitarian neighborhood alliance ah, and, yes, yes. and i did <laughs> I'm one of the first motivational speakers to do a seminar at the Staples Center. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know? Are you serious? Like, <laughs> yes. That's massive. Yes. And I was oh, so wonderful. happy to be to be recognized in my own community and right. to start to bridge the gap between entertainment and empowerment. Absolutely wonderful, which allows me to segue, Jeannie. You can just chime in here, but I don't want to be selfish here. You know, I, I just, Absolutely. this man, oh, my God, he, he's a phenomenon in and of itself. Like I said, um, Dr. Tanji, uh, see, with, with, with John, I mean, so many people are familiar with his dad, uh, the motivator, uh, Les Brown. And would you say, John, that growing up watching your father was a direct 
influence and then when in your life did did you decide you were going to take the baton and create your own lane well yes i think that th that's a great question mm -hmm. growing up i remember you know there's a speech online called it's not over until you win <sighs> And it's my dad's most popular speech. It's his best-selling speech, and it's in front of 80,000 people at the Georgia Dome. Oh and many people are amazed to see that crowd, but I remember being in the audience. Wow. And in the audience, when he, he started telling a story about me playing Connect Four just as a little child, yeah, yeah. and I remember, hold on, is that my dad talking about me? And I remember watching him change lives as a kid, and I said, one day, one day, I'm going to do that. Wow. And while other kids were playing with their toys, I had to learn motivational books. I had to <laughs> read and study. And I started touring at the age of 10 years old. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. By the time I was 14, yeah. I was the highest paid teen speaker in America. And see, oh, John, I'm, I'm glad you're saying that yeah. because I consistently uh, have a conversation about, you know, the world we live in now, it is so different. I'm looking at your son, Honor, and how y he's already doing his thing, and I'll let him introduce that in of minutes, course. okay? <laughs> I will not <laughs> interfere with that intro. Um, but they can begin now. They can begin now. Yeah. And we, we talk about, I'm a big advocate of higher education. We should be always learning all day, every day. But I am about motivating and educating young people to be entrepreneurs, you know, at honors age. I mean, you started at 10, yes. at 10, yeah. you knew. So there are no excuses. So I'm so glad you're talking about that because I don't hear it enough. And I'm, oh, I love I know, that. Right? I know. <laughs> Thank you. And, and it's like the purpose of the show, really to create an environment mm. That you are right. totally immersed in principles that remind you of who and whose you are. Thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I, I got this little person that says uh, Aunt Tanji has waterworks, and I'm trying to be a big <laughs> girl here and not have any waterworks. One of the things that I really want to ask you as it relates to your being, I mean, your work is what you do. Mm -hmm. As it relates to, excuse me, what God said, this is what you were sent to the earth to do. And you're doing that. And I thank you so very much for being courageous. I thank you for the sacrifices that you've made because I don't know to that level, to that extent, everything that you had to go through to get here. But I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so, so very much. Thank you. Was it difficult once you knew? Once you discovered, once you were in the environment for you to become who you are, was it difficult to live and be? Or did you find yourself, and I, wanna, I want this to make sense here, did you find yourself just doing and not becoming? Mm, that, that's a great question. So people ask all the time, what's it like growing up with a <laughs> like a major motivator in yeah. your household yeah. and I the only yeah. response I can say is it's like having high standards that never go away <laughs> okay wow, <laughs> wow. wow. And, and here's something to remember especially as we're closing out the year mm. no one rises to low expectations mm. and here's something else to remember a good friend of mine um Arius Williams, he put out a movie, and the tagline was so powerful. It said, there's no choice for the chosen. Mm. There's no choice for the chosen. Right. And the reason why I brought my five-year-old, Honor Brown, with me today, and don't worry, you're going to hear from him, <laughs> is because <laughs> right now I'm carrying the torch. My family business has generated over $100 million, mm -hmm. and there's so many. You see comic books out there. You see all these cartoons that go on for generations and generations, and I am determined to make sure that Mamie Brown's grandbaby boy and great-grandbaby boy carries the torch of motivation <laughs> for future generations to come. A hundred years from now, you'll have a Brown family member motivating and inspiring virtually and digitally, no matter what new platforms come out there will be someone in our bloodline that is carrying the torch of motivation and see that's true wealth 
Mm-hmm. That's wealth. Not yes. rich, not uh, coins, okay? No. True wealth, wow. and we don't talk about that enough. That, that, that's it. Yes, and we'll that talk about it. it today. Generational wealth. Okay. There are some people where just because you're related to them, oh, you go places and the doors open. Mm. There exactly. are some people who live their lives serving others to the point where five, ten generations from now, they'll still have a path for success and they won't have to worry because of the contribution that was made during one lifetime. I love it. Absolutely. Mm. And mm-hmm. I, I didn't say it as eloquently as you, <laughs> but I have told uh, my children and grandchildren, you've got to make a difference in this world. You've got to. And I believe that God honestly kind of looks at us to see what we've done through our grandchildren and not so much as our children. And you know what? Without further ado, would you please introduce? <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, yeah. the world's boom, most powerful boom, 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 boom. speaker in the world, boom, 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 only five boom, 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 years old, boom, boom, boom. debuting. Boom. On this show for the first time. The Dr. Tanji Show. The Dr. Tanji Show. His name is Honor Phoenix Baldwin Brown. Go, Honor. Go, Honor. I want to think bad enough to go out and fight for, to work day and night for, to give your time, your peace, and your sleep for it. If all that you dream and scheme is about it. And life seems useless and worthless without it. And if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of the opposition for it. And if you simply go after that thing that you are with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, and confidence, and strength for tenacity, uh, if, if neither, neither cold, cold poverty, poverty sameness, and pain, pain of body and brain could keep you away from that thing that you want. If dogged and grim, grim, if dogged and grim, with the help of God, with if dogged and grim, you besiege and beset it. it. With, with the, the help, help of, of God, God, you will get it. Yes! Woo! You will get it! And Honor Brown, he's got it! He's got it! Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow, Thank you. Honor. I was gonna say, um, I was gonna say, I was gonna say to these people, I was gonna say how old I was, and, and, and I didn't say it. Well, t- <laughs> tell them how old you are, son. They already know. <laughs> <laughs> There's no choice for the chosen. And so I dragged little man here, and we were practicing the whole way. If they can learn ABCs, if they can learn the Power Ranger songs and all of these things, I said, how can we pass this on to the next generation? And I'm so proud. Here's something to remember for all the parents out there, and I know this is holiday season, parenthood is the highest form of leadership. Yes, it mm. is. Parenthood is the highest form of leadership. And I'm so grateful. I cannot tell you the amount of the, the fear that I had to overcome when my son was first born, when I was looked him, when he opened his eyes for the first time and we were in the hospital. And I, I love to tell the story because I'll never forget the image when he grabbed my finger for the first time, yeah. his nails were so soft that they curled up on me. Oh, you know? wow. Wow. And I looked at him in his eyes and I said, there's greatness in you, young man. And I realized then I had to do whatever it, whatever it takes to make sure that Honor Brown grew up with the same privileges that I grew up with. Whatever it takes to make sure that he could live an extraordinary life. And oh, I he's smiling so about grateful. that. Honor, look, you got some scoop <laughs> for Auntie Jeannie over here. Look, look. <laughs> Tell me about some of your goods. What's that microphone for? <laughs> that one is over there if in case it was uh, another guest. Absolutely. Okay. So now we're gonna we're gonna keep on with the show, okay? Could would you mind just listening for a little while, son? 
I could talk to more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that that's incredible. It's it's in the genes. I, you yes, got to love it. But he's he's anointed. It's it's yes. the way he is uh he focuses as well. I'm looking at his eye contact. Um he's very serious about what he wants to present <laughs> and and do not uh you know <laughs> Take him off of his course. <laughs> Be clear about that. Absolutely not. I'm not messing with him. I'm not messing with him. He's the next generation, yes, and I'm so is. grateful. Absolutely. And, guys, you, you're so blessed to have heard him on this show. And, of course, you can interact with us live at Dr. Tanji Show. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a Facebook alert from your good old ATL, Dr. Tanji. <laughs> and it's actually from Kenny for uh, John Leslie Brown, actually a sophomore at uh, Morehouse. Mm. The house. Morehouse. And yes, <laughs> and he said that he um, enjoys uh, watching you on YouTube. He said he has uh, several projects that he wants to accomplish, and he knows that your book, Harvard Effect, is uh, one of your many products. How do you decide when you're going to release something and what comes first and second? Well, we live in a time where there's a lot of traffic on the internet there's people are dropping new projects all the time mm -hmm. they even have it now where if you're not creative and right. you can't come up with your own material right. you could buy my kind and put it out and you're right second. and as a okay. brown i don't have the privilege of being a thought thief okay <laughs> so <laughs> i like to make sure that my all the projects that i do that they come from me that they're truly inspired from a higher power mm -hmm. and i i worked Many years, you know, I was on punishment at 14 for not writing a book. <laughs> and, wow. and we didn't have regular punishments in my household. Uh, I love to talk about my dad. He put me on punishment before he saw my report card, you know, because he wow. knew what I was capable of. He took away the, the, the keyboard from my computer, took away my, my TV time. Then he took the door off of the hinges of my room oh, wow. and said, every time I walk by, you better be studying. <laughs> and here's why. It's something that I read when I was in my room with the door off of the hinges by Jim Rohn. And it said, your life, my life, the lives of each and every one of us will serve as either a warning or an example. Wow. It went on to say a warning of lack of discipline, mm -hmm. lack of drive and ambition, or an example of objectives clearly perceived and intensely pursued. Hmm. And I choose to put out a project when when there's something gets in my spirit, when I tap into some new information mm -hmm. that no one else has heard before, that many people aren't tuned into, right. that's when I know I have to share it with the masses. I love it. And when my book Harvard Effect, I was with my dad and we were, um, he just came back from working with the Gates family. Mm. Okay. You might have heard of them. Oh, yeah. Bill and Melinda. Bill and Melinda yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I've been trying to be their niece exactly. ever since exactly. I found out. <laughs> Me too. I'm a nephew. <laughs> right, right, right. Related. Okay. And, I, you know, he said it so casually. And he yeah. said, I just got back from working with the Gates family. And after speaking to their organization, they, they, they took me in the back room. They said, hey, Mr. Brown, we heard you've got, you talk about your 10 and 20 year goals. That's nice. But here at Microsoft, let me show you something. They pulled up a screen and said, this is where the Gates family will be in the area of technology a hundred years from now. Wow. A hundred years wow. from now. And so my dad said, wow, just like you. He said, wow. And yeah. you know what I was thinking? How? <laughs> <laughs> How do you make a hundred year plan? How do you wow. make a plan that will last the test of time? And here's the, the key in this. Most people, when they're thinking about their new year and their new goals, mm -hmm. they're thinking about what do I have to do for me? What type of car I want to drive? What type of place I want to live? But when you're engaged in something that's bigger than you, a higher service, service above self, then you ask yourself a dis different question. You have to ask yourself, why will the world be different because you were born? And that's the core of the projects that I create. Each project that I make sure that I produce, it's for high achievers, people who want to make a lasting transformation on the planet. So that's who your target audience Absolutely. is. So, Kenny, I hope Absolutely. you heard that. You know, John, you, <laughs> unless you have something of that caliber, yes. that's when you decide when something goes out. And so what, is it uh, fair to say that 
you do a project at a time, give birth and before you move on? Or is it you, are you ever uh, doing multiple projects? Well, that, that's, that's a great question. So there's something I, I had the privilege of. One of my goals was to go. I, I spoke for Harvard University, yeah, well, and, and I got an award there. Yeah. And I was surrounded by great minds. A lot of times yeah. you, you're in your circle locally, and you aren't always challenged. Right. People know what they expect of you. Right. And I always say you have to ask yourself two questions, and this is important as we go into the new year. Ask yourself, who can you count on, hmm. and who should you count out? Mm. Okay. Can you repeat that? <laughs> As we enter writing, the new right? year and you're looking at your relationships, who can you count on and who should you count out? Who can you count on to inspire you, to challenge you, to push you when you don't feel like pushing yourself, to push you so that you can better your best? And who should you count out? Those toxic, negative, draining people that don't realize who and whose you are. And I had the privilege. I said, you know, one day. I want to go to Harvard. I was touring at an early age. I yeah. was making great money. I never thought that I, I would go to a prestigious university. And a couple years ago, I left everything. I left sunny L.A. And I moved to Boston. Okay? No, <laughs> In the I'm cold. Yeah. And started attending Harvard University. Oh, wow, love amazing. It. Isn't wow. that amazing. something? Thank you. Studying lessons in wow. leadership at, uh, at Harvard Hall. And I learned something there. It's something called the pivot product. Okay. You see, okay. the pivot product, when you launch a product, it has a shelf space. It has a time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't find a way to make your product extinct, then someone else will. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. So Absolutely. that's why I emphasize the 100-year plan because I've got products for the next 10 years outlined. I and, love it. and I'll give you just a little hint Absolutely. of my next book project. Yeah. Actually, people um, later on, if you like, I'll tell them they can download a, a little snippet from thank my you. new book. That would be That'll wonderful. That'll be great. From, thank uh, you. Thank you. LesBrownJr.com. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> LesBrownJr.com. You can't forget that. <laughs> JR at the end. <laughs> you go there, you download a free book with my dad and I, our first book ever, oh, wow. and also you'll get access to a motivational portal with information and content that will last and open up for the next 10 years. Oh, wow. wow. And now, now, yeah, I know, right? Wow. Isn't that Look, right? It's a wow factor, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> right. But John, he brought I, the wow I've factor. been doing the work. This is what I do. And now, how do you go beyond the Harvard effect? How do you go beyond the 100-year plan? And my next product is called, it's a... Now, there's a war going on, mm -hmm. okay? There's a battle mm -hmm. out there, and mm -hmm. it's, it's happening online. It's happening on your phone. People are fighting for your attention, but it's not a war between the Lakers and the right. Warriors, you know, <laughs> nothing like that. Right. It's not a war with China or Russia, no. It's a war with the critics versus the mentors. Thank you. Thank you the very critics much. versus Absolutely. the mentors. Absolutely. That's the name of my next book coming out in 2019. Critics mm -hmm. versus mentors. Right now, when you get up in the morning and you pull up your phone, you're either going to tune into some critics right. talking about LeBron James and how right. he shot last night, right. or talking about some of our uh, uh, our advocates or right. political leaders out there, or Absolutely. you're going to tune into some mentors, people that inspire you and push you to the next level. And the number one reason why people fail mm -hmm. every year, year in and year out, the number one reason, and remember this, is not fear of failure mm -hmm. or fear of success. It's not lack of talent, but it's the fear of criticism. The fear of criticism. There's yeah. someone listening right now. They have a goal and dream inside them that they haven't taken action on for years because their fear of being criticized by someone who hasn't even accomplished what they're seeking to accomplish. Wow. And right now, the, the critics are winning the war. But over the next few years, mm -hmm. we need the mentors to step up and to have some courage. We need the mentors to be braver than the critics and to do something that's powerful, that'll strike fear in the hearts of these naysayers. I love it. No, absolutely, absolutely, John. And I just think wow. about, um, like, again, I mean, <laughs> the bottom line is, I mean, what are you digesting? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what is it that you are taking in? And that's exactly exactly what you were saying. And let me ask you this, because uh, I'm sure Morehouse now right. <laughs> is like, we got right. that John, Dr. Taji right. show. And, and it's simple. And it's as simple as that. If you could talk to 10 year old John Leslie Brown Jr. Mm. Mm. With all that you know, all you've experienced, 
what would you uh, tell him now? You know, just in hindsight, I mean, with everything that you know, what is it that you would go back and tell him that you would have done differently? That is such a great question. Mm -hmm. If I was talking to the 10 year old me, um, I, I, I think there's, there's one thing that I would say. I would say that, you know, it's okay not to be like everyone else. When I was 10 and I was touring with the number one speaker in the world, I was, I was lonely. <laughs> yeah. I felt like, you know, my friends didn't want a motivational coach. And I wanted to fit in. And I wasted a lot of time later on in my life trying to fit in with other people. So if I was talking to my 10-year-old self or anyone else t that's listening, no matter what age you are, I would say fit out. Ah, fit good. out. That is so and good. be okay with fitting out. Dare to be different. Fit Dead out, to I like different. that. Yes, indeed. Fit. Look, Fit we were just out. coming out with all of these multi-million dollar, <laughs> dollar mission statements. I like, yeah, okay. Look, 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 you know, look, look, that's the next, that's the next tip. <laughs> what? What? Yes. I love it. I love it. That is amazing. That is amazing. And then did you ever feel, um, like I said, it's, it's amazing, like you said, to, to tour with a number one motivational speaker. I mean, your, your dad, mm -hmm. but, um, feeling that it, when, when you were ever challenged to be as great or to fulfill the destiny, what pushed you through? Well, God, okay? <laughs> as simple as that. Yeah. There, there's a, a yeah. We have a, a strong spiritual foundation. Okay. And I really, the one thing that, we, that I was taught to say after we give a, a powerful speech, you know, sometimes you, mm -hmm. you get the standing ovation mm -hmm. and you're mm -hmm. signing autographs and mm -hmm. you're staying in these beautiful suites and right. traveling. But we always say more of thee and less of me. Amen. This is not something that I could have thought of, dreamed of. Mm -hmm. I am a product of of the product and I did not realize until I got older and really having a son made me realize how blessed I am to have the father that I have and wow. my son mark my words and we'll be able to circle back and Absolutely. trace this interview 10 Absolutely. years from now honor Phoenix Brown he does not have a choice in this we demand greatness no <laughs> he does not have an option he wow. will be speaking from the stage he will be carrying the mantle forward and it's because it's not about us it's right. not about what we want to do it's Absolutely. not about the games that we want to play Absolutely. or the different things that we see on the TV screen right. that we want to emulate right. it's really about how can we be of service to others that's it. and we need more people empowering that's people out absolutely there. that's it I mean, you you've taken my words I <laughs> wow I, I told you guys you were gonna be blessed didn't I? I told you that this great man was here with this great fruitful son already um, one of the things I thought was really really fun uh, with you and your dad your dad would say something along the lines of shoot for the moon because even if you miss you'll land among the stars yes. dad's version yes. now I wrote your version <laughs> but you say your version if you will please. what's you my do? version I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I have so I, many versions I'll coach you a little bit okay coach me a little bit what's my version shoot and it was a it was a rap because you are world oh my version yeah. well see that was one of my goals early <laughs> on that's true <laughs> That's so true. I wanted to take my dad's motivational yep. principles yep. and put them in hip hop form. Uh -huh. And one of the first songs I did that, it was Shoot for the Moon. Because even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. The time is coming soon. <laughs> Instead of busting shots at my brothers and sisters, shoot for the moon. Because even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. It's something from the school. If you don't raise the bar, you'll end up behind the bar. Boom. Come on now. Boom. Come on Boom. Now. Boom. Drops my oh. exit left. Yes. Okay? Yes. <laughs> and now I get to share those songs yeah. because I am not an entertainer. My dad used to tell me, hey, you're not an entertainer. Okay? You Maybe you could do that. You study that. But no, you're Mamie Brown's grandbaby boy. You are an intellectual resource. And now when I tuck my son in at night, what do we sing when we go to sleep at night, son? Go say it. I can see me at the. I can see me at the. I can see me at the. 
doing nothing but I can see me at the top. I can see me at the top doing nothing but achieving at the top. Oh, I love that. Wow. <laughs> it's simple as that. When, when we were driving here, my dad told me, my dad told me when we get home. You're going to get some what? I'm going to get some four Oreo <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Look, Otter, high five. High five. High five. Nothing. Look, the Oreo, look, that, standards, okay? Not just any cookie, okay? You can I make this Work it, Honor. You can't make this up. Wow. And so you got to, so here it is. This is incentive-based Oh, absolutely. Training. He's, he's working. Incentive he's working, based. Dad. Now, I me, like it. My incentive, by the time I was 10, my incentive was financial, you know? Right. <laughs> I want, but Honor right now, he just wants some Oreos. Nothing like, <laughs> nothing like Oreo He'll cookie. memorize a motivational song. <laughs> It, just some Oreos. You know, I want to ask you this Five question. Oreos now, son. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. Please get that out there. Five. You heard daddy, right? <laughs> intrinsic and extrinsic motivators. Mm. And for the people, there's someone calling, and I will put you on hold just for a second. I'm so very, very sorry. Um, for intrinsic and extrinsic motivators or for people in layman's term that says being led, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm, I don't want to diminish anybody's ideologies or their way of thinking. I just know what works in the realm of when you are, you know you're put here for a reason, you're moving toward that reason, you're being developed internally. Was, what was your extrinsic motivator? I, well, it's quite simple. Okay. My extrinsic motivator was to make my dad proud. Wow! <laughs> you know, I, I wanted oh, to, wow. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to make my dad proud, and that was something that I remember just the backstage moments okay. where you say okay. and where what we say to each other right before we go on stage. We would look at each other, okay. and after we pray, we say, "Make me proud," and. I I always wanted to make my dad proud. Do you oh. guys do that now? Still oh, to this yes. day. <laughs> Still to this day. Yeah. Via text or FaceTime. That's that's that magic. Still yeah. to this day. Just yesterday I was I was at the park working with Honor yeah. on his piece and we're FaceTiming yeah. and it's just a ma when you when you have when you're a kid and I still feel like a kid inside. Absolutely. But when you see your child play with your dad, mm -hmm. when you see them interacting, yeah. reading the letter hunt together and different yeah. things, and he's 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 75 now. He's about to be 75, wow. but he, I call him he's a 70-year-old trapped in a 40-year-old's body, uh -huh. okay? Oh, yeah, your dad not slowing down. <laughs> no, he's not, he's at not all. slowing at down. All. And, he, and he keeps a Clairol on him like it's a cell phone. <laughs> He's gonna get me for that. So. That's what I'm about to say. Last, no, I remember you from DC and Baltimore. Your son said that. It wasn't us, okay? Oh he doesn't have any shame in his guy. <laughs> I, I need some right now. I'm getting there. But, but so extrinsically, um, yeah. um, you know, uh, that. To, now here's something that I learned. I was interviewed by the CEO, or in doing an interview with the CEO of Keller Williams Publishing, wow. and he said that he felt like he hit the parent jackpot growing up. Okay. And one of the things that his parents always taught him, they always asked him, the same like I asked Honor now, he, they always say, are you proud of yourself? Wow. They didn't That's say, beautiful. I'm proud of you. They say, are you proud of yourself? So that you can be motivated and mm -hmm. have that intrinsic mm -hmm. motivation. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing. When I was young, I would do anything to make my dad proud. And now there's it's something to teach my son yeah. the tools and techniques and strategies so that even if I'm not around, he can make himself proud. Absolutely. There's a formula and a blueprint so that he doesn't have to start from scratch. Absolutely. And you are so blessed, Honor. You do know that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like Honor. It's like, you know, like, it's no, you know, Hollywood games. It is what it is. It's straightforward. 
Absolutely. Six cookies. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Look at that smile. I love That's it. That's it. I want to segue. I feel it's like our caller is so long. So I want to hear from the person that is that took time to call in. Thank you so, so very much. You are live on the air. Who am I speaking with? This is Fernie Gavin. Hi, Dr. Tanji. Ah! <laughs> this woman here, can I just kind of... Where is she from? She is... A, tell us where you're from. Jackson, Mississippi, by way of... Jackson, Mississippi, by way of New York, and then California, now I'm in Houston. <laughs> this woman, and, and thank you, Venetra. I don't, I don't want to tell why you're calling, because I don't know, but I just want to tell that I am so, so very grateful that you did call, and she is living a life that mm -hmm. she dreamt about, and I am so proud of you. So, yes, please tell us what's going on with you. Well, first, I want to say that I ha have been able to live a life where I can f keep walking in faith because of people like you, Dr. Tanji, who uh, just reaches out at the right time for that right motivation and that right word from God and just puts you, sometimes when you steer to another path, God will send someone to straighten you back up. Hmm. And you've been that person. Okay. And so I tell everybody, like, you are amazing, anointed, and people are going to see all the greatness oh, that you. God has bestowed inside of you. Thank you so and much. And so that's it. To God <laughs> but be I the wanted glory. to say, go ahead. I said, to God be the glory. You know, that has to go to him. I'm just yeah. a conduit. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. What's your question? But I, I wanted to say to Mr. Brown, thank you so much for bringing your son and allow us to hear the greatness and the most like he the words that you're teaching him mm -hmm. and how he's speaking it with authority and power like that is such a blessing and an influence yes to people who are listening and just thank you for that that was amazing yeah. what are you saying <laughs> thank you yeah. <laughs> thank yes you. I'm, a, I'm so beautifully handsome intelligent i already see the greatness that's happening to you baby and you just keep doing what your dad is telling you to do and you're gonna be amazing Absolutely. i can just feel it <laughs> and he just <laughs> and he just said that was everything no i'm, I I'm done he, he just asked you are you happy are you happy it, it, it's it's wow. going right back i mean are wow. you proud of me mm -hmm. are you happy mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm done. Okay, that was yeah. it. That was and, it. And this is, it really reminds me how, how we're born with this, yeah. this innocence, uh -huh. with this innocence. Uh -huh. and, and many of us don't have, it's not cultivated and no, we're not groomed. Absolutely. So, but start over right now. Make sure that you are groomed into greatness. Absolutely. Thank you, baby, for calling. I love you, love you, love you. Thank <laughs> you for interacting with the Dr. Taji show. Wow. This spells the Harvard effect. <laughs> Thank you. Now, no, look, honor now, I know. I, now I know. I love this guy, I know, he's right? the one. What school are you going to when you get bigger? I don't know yet. <laughs> going options. to Harvard, son. <laughs> <laughs> or know, Morehouse. Or, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if you guys have your own school that you're, you're training other people like yourself. So, you know, you probably really don't know that thing harvard and i get that or morehouse but i see you with your own school absolutely we need you thank you thank you so 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 very much for being here for being here for saying yes for stepping out of eternity and putting on this earth suit and, 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 and having your suke, having your soulish man, your mind, your will, and your, and your emotions, you're, you place the demand on your soul. So your spirit, because you are spirit, said, I got to do what he says. Hmm. <laughs> Even when no. the body wants to do something else and <laughs> you're like, I, I got to do what he says. Yes. So thank you for that. Thank you. I, I appreciate you. Um, I'm so happy that I can say I was on your show. Oh, don't you hey, dare. Don't you I'm dare. So blessed. <laughs> we, we made it. We made it. We made it. Look, made Mama it. made it. You, you, you yeah. guys do know that my head is like getting really big, right? And, Come on. And so. this is Honor's <laughs> first interview oh, ever wow. on the radio. Not the debut. Oh, my God. Not the debut. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, yes. look, honor, look, I'm uh, no. J- look, he's looking at me like this one over here, this yeah. firecracker. Yeah, no. When when you like just all over the world, and I see your billboard, I'm like, man, I was sitting beside him in the beginning. Okay, so I like you say, okay, Auntie Jeannie, I remember <laughs> I got that. Thank you, baby. Thank you so very much for being obedient. And I promise you, I've learned this lesson, right? Obedience is so much better than anything because when dad says something, it's only coming from a place of responsibility because he loves you so very much. He's responsible for you. And that's what love is. Love is a responsibility. And you have one too. And is <laughs> Before you start charging me <laughs> thousands and millions, I'm going to collect on some Oreos. <laughs> I'm going to get my Oreo stock up. Oreo. But yeah, I'm going to deal with this right now. We'll speak for Oreos. Right, right. <laughs> Hashtag Oreos. Hashtag oh. how did I get here? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. When I'm a teenager, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some. Some teenager um, headphones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a brand. Oh, so we're doing, okay, well, yeah, y- yeah. you're going to have, like, earbuds that are doing, uh, t- you know, probably have your own speeches inside the <laughs> headphones. I, I got it. Already programmed. I, I got it. I, I agree, wow. Honor Brown. Thank you. Mr. Brown, what's next? Well, we're going into the new year. Yes. And there are lots of people, they don't want to take their old attitude into the new year. Yes. And so... There's something that I was I was up late last night. I was excited because I know that the reason why I'm here today is because my dad took me into environments where I had no business being, okay? <laughs> he took me and dragged me there so I can be exposed to things at an Exposure. early age. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I've lived a life that many people just dream of. And I dream of my life sometimes. I pinch myself and say, thank you, God. Yeah. But here's something that we have to do. Make an inventory of all of the excuses that you made this year. Did you hear me on that? When you're building a business, you have to have an inventory, a certain amount of products that you can get out there. But I realized going into the new year, you have to make an inventory of your excuses. Mm. When I went to Harvard, I I was away from my son. I was not able to talk to him or see him. And I, I had to make a decision to come back from Boston to do whatever it takes to get back in my son's life. I was not going to allow my dream, my business, my travel schedule, anything to be an excuse for me to miss out on the blessing of a lifetime of being a dad. And, oh, no, you're scared of, you're scared of court. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, no, that's yeah. just an excuse. You're Absolutely. scared. The top three fears that keep people on the sidelines of life. And if, for those that follow me on Facebook, we've been doing a series about sideline living. Mm. The top three fears, the fear of not being good enough, the fear of not being smart enough, and the fear of not being rich enough. Mm. And those are all excuses. I want you to write down every excuse that you made this year. And if you start to make those same excuses next year, at least you'll see it and you have to draw the line and say, that's a side line, that's sideline thinking. And right now we need people who step into the arena of life and are, don't allow their fears, their excuses to define them. Mm. Mentor, step up. Wow. Come on now. Let's, let's go. Let's look. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, ready. I'm listening. Mentors. I'm listening. Come I'm ready. On. I'm ready. We're doing mentors. this. Lock up. Let's yes. lock up. Lock up. Lock up. Lock up. Lock up. And then you lock up with Dr. Turner. No, Come on, lock, lock up. up. We're Get those arms then, over there. Yeah. And then how... <laughs> <laughs> but no, because this is how we going in to the arena as mentors. Yes, And then yes. if anybody wants to interact with you, wh- where, where are all the connects? Yes. Yes. So go to lesbrownjr.com. Uh, on the homepage, you will see uh, it says sign up for motivational consulting. That goes directly to me. I am I, I'm the digital person in my family. Okay. I built my dad's fan following to 1.3 million. Okay, okay. I, I'm the, my dad still okay. uses Atrax, right. so I, I had to <laughs> learn all of these things myself because. People will try, they will They will charge yeah. you big money yeah. just to use yeah. their thumbs, okay? Yeah. So yes. I build all my websites on my membership sites. I learned wow. how to do all of that myself. Here's something that Alvin Toffler said, which I'll never forget. Alvin Toffler, who wrote, wrote the book Future Shock, he said, the new illiterates of the world are not the ones that cannot read and write. The new illiterates of the world are those that cannot learn, unlearn, 
and then relearn. Oh, oh, relearn. Oh, wow. Because after you get to a certain point and you think you know things, you'll stop, or that's when you get other people. Oh, yes. That, oh, that's a jewel. Come on now. Come on now. Absolutely. And there are some things, all of those excuses in your excuse inventory sheet, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you've got to unlearn those excuses. You've got to unlearn those excuses. I've never been a dad before. Oh, I like to travel. Oh, I don't know how to change a diaper. Right. It doesn't matter now. Doesn't matter. <laughs> because, Absolutely. Because, Absolutely. because when you get past that and right. you be go beyond that, the yeah. best solution, see, an excuse, that's defense, and you're defending yeah. your limitations. One of the people that inspired my dad to speak, Mike Williams, he said when my dad was saying why he couldn't be a motivational speaker because he put it off for 14 years before he actually pursued it. For 14 years, he procrastinated. He said, if you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. Whoa. (laughs) Okay. You heard it. With that. Drop mic again. X is left again. We're we're leaving. (laughs) Thank you so very much. Give it up for Honor Brown. I'm tour manager. Absolutely. <laughs> I got the Oreos. And the headphones. Yes. Thank with you. the okay. program, with the speech inside. Absolutely. God bless everybody. Thank you so, so very much for tuning in. Again, we're here Wednesdays, 2 o'clock p- uh, p- uh, Pacific Standard Time, 4 o'clock Central, and 5 o'clock Eastern. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye now. Happy. Happy.